This week, beneath the bustle of the Big Apple, another world waits. Once a marvel of urban engineering, New Yorkers all too often find themselves grappling with crime underground, from petty thefts to violent assaults, and worse, the headlines tell a story that leaves riders wondering, is the subway safe? Right now, Fox 5's crime in the city, the subways. Here are just a few of the crimes that grip the five boroughs. We begin at the crossroads of the world in 2017, when a morning commute like any other takes a terrifying turn. This surveillance footage from December 11th, 2017 showed Akayed Ula walking through the Port Authority Times Square subway station before detonating a pipe bomb in the busy underground walkway. The improvised explosive device was attached to his chest, but only partly went off, leaving Ula lying on the ground near the blast where Port Authority police found and arrested him. Federal prosecutors charged the Islamic State supporter on six criminal counts, including using a weapon of mass destruction and providing material support for a terrorist organization. And in November 2018, after a one-week trial, a jury convicted Ola on all charges. His sentencing, originally scheduled for mid-2019, faced multiple delays through 2020 due to the coronavirus. Last month, his lawyer asked the court for leniency, saying he deserved no more than 35 years behind bars. But today, Judge Richard J. Sullivan rejected those pleas, instead sentencing Ula to life in prison for what the judge called Ula's, quote, heinous crime. At the hearing, the 31-year-old Bangladeshi immigrant apologized to his victims, law enforcement, and his family, whose lives, he said, were ruined by his actions. In a statement, Manhattan's U.S. attorney Audrey Strauss said, quote, Ula's motive was clear and unambiguous, a deeply held ideological hatred for America. Ironically, Ula's actions resulted only in reaffirming the greatness of America by displaying the fairness and impartiality for which our justice system stands. And NYC Transit Interim President Sarah Feinberg also reacting to the sentence, praising the MTA workforce for what she called the heroic response to the December 2017 attack here at Times Square. Just a few years later at the same stop, a tragic death exposes the vulnerability of subway riders and the city's mental health crisis. The suspect in that horrific attack is a homeless man with a history of mental illness. And now the high profile case is posing a big test for Mayor Adams, who campaigned on making this city safer. Arthur Chien is live in Times Square tonight with the latest. Arthur. Well, Teresa, Steve, we're taking a look at what's happening behind us here. This has been a very unpredictable station, as you're going to see in just a minute. Several ideas are being discussed as a result of this. Some of them come up every time there's an incident like this, including the idea of putting partition screens in on all subway platforms. Officials say that will not work in New York, but they say there are other things that can be done that would make a difference. Two days after Michelle Alyssa Go was killed, shoved in front of a moving train at the Times Square subway station, her death continues to send ripples throughout the city, including with her neighbors. It's jarring. It's a tragedy. It's mortifying. It's definitely something that I think about every time I go in the subway. As the alleged suspect, Simon Marshall, undergoes a psychiatric evaluation, the question being asked is how does the city make the subways safer? Just two months ago in November, another Asian woman was shoved onto the tracks at the same station on the same platform. The suspect, also a homeless man. Complicating matters. Comments this weekend by Mayor Adams suggesting the subways are safe but has a perception problem. That public safety is not only actual but it's perceived. And when you have an incident like this, the perception is what we're fighting against. But the city is also fighting against some very real crime. At least 56 New Yorkers have been pushed onto subway tracks over the past two years. And subway crimes have doubled so far this year compared with the same period last year, a 107 percent increase. Transit experts say this is the real problem. Turnstile jumping has exploded in recent years. Fox 5 cameras at the same Times Square station where Michelle Goh was killed recorded countless cases of individuals jumping, crawling, or shimmying. We saw it before this weekend and after, including tonight. Even our camera crew was absolutely no deterrent. And police often send us videos looking for suspects in subway crimes. The videos released all too often show how the suspects entered the system. 99.99% of people that are committing crimes in the subways did not pay their fare. If we can stop that at the turnstiles, we've not only helped the MTA's bottom line, but we've stopped crime in its tracks.
While running for mayor, Adams focused on a law named after Kendra Webdale, who was murdered when she was shoved onto subway tracks in 1999 by a man with a history of mental illness. Kendra's law can require outpatient treatment for a mentally ill person. Judges, do your job. It's time to use Kendra's law to deal with the mental health crisis that we're, we're seeing. Now, transit advocates say that Kendra's law is underutilized and also underfunded. We will probably see in the coming days, in the coming weeks, what the new mayor's plan is to utilize Kendra's law again. By the way, just during the time of this live shot, two more people jumped the turnstile here. Next stop, Brooklyn, in April 2023, when a train erupts in smoke, gunfire, and chaos, leaving 29 hurt and a city shaken. Just about every agency that you can imagine is involved with this investigation. Talking about the NYPD, the FBI, the ATF, and the NYPD's Joint Terrorism Task Force. Although at this point, this uh, attack today is not being investigated as a terrorist attack. And as bad as it was today, and it was bad, it could have been even worse. Police saying the gunman's gun jammed, preventing him from shooting even more people. Panic commuters filled with fear escaping from a smoke-filled subway car on the N train at the 36th Street station in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. The NYPD saying the suspect popped two smoke canisters to confuse riders during the height of the morning rush before firing his gun 33 times. Donned what appeared to be a gas mask. He then took a canister out of his bag and opened it. The train at that time began to fill with smoke. He then opened fire, striking multiple people on the subway and in the platform. Police say the suspect's gun jammed, preventing him from firing more shots. Authorities are looking for 62-year-old Frank James. He is about 6 feet, 2 inches tall, and 250 pounds. Police are calling him a person of interest. In all of the chaos, the suspect was mistaken by many for an MTA worker. Wearing an orange-green nylon-type construction vest. He also had on a gray hoodie, a surgical mask, and a neon green construction helmet. Police say James rented this U-Haul van in Philadelphia yesterday. He parked it here on Kings Highway in Gravesend, Brooklyn, about 5 a.m., and then walked a few blocks to get on the N train. After the shooting, the keys to that van, James' credit card, his jacket, and the gun used in the shooting were all found at the scene. As detectives processed the crime scene, they recovered a 9mm semi-automatic handgun, extended magazines, and a hatchet. Also found is a liquid we believe to be gasoline and a bag containing consumer-grade fireworks and a hobby fuse. Mayor Adams appearing virtually since he remains under quarantine with COVID. You have my word as a former police officer, a fellow New Yorker, and your mayor, that we will end this epidemic and that will capture the individual responsible for today's attack. We will capture him and prosecute him to the full extent of the law. And by the way, the person of interest, Frank James, he has both an address and a driver's license in the state of Wisconsin. He also has an address in Philadelphia. Police also saying that he has posted videos to YouTube ranting and criticizing against Mayor Adams' policies, as well as other issues, including homelessness. In May of the following year, another subway death ignites debates about public safety, inequality, and accountability. At this hour, the DA's office is conducting what it's calling a rigorous investigation into what happened. Fox Vice Sharon Crowley live in Soho with more on what that dramatic video shows. Sharon. This situation has really evoked a lot of passions on all sides of this issue. A lot of homeless advocates very upset tonight. I don't know if you can hear them screaming in the background of where I'm standing now. But as you said, the medical examiner has ruled this a homicide and the DA's office is now investigating. New video shows riders on the northbound F train Monday afternoon trying to subdue 30-year-old Jordan Neely before his death. You can see a 24-year-old Marine veteran appears to have Neely in a chokehold from behind while another man tries to immobilize his arms. A separate video shows officers trying to unsuccessfully revive Neely. Police say Neely, who was 30 years old, had a criminal record with 44 prior arrests, including disorderly conduct, assault, and fare evasion. On Monday, 
When this happened, Neely was reportedly harassing subway riders on the F train. The New York City Office of the Medical Examiner has just ruled Neely's death a homicide. The cause of death, compression on the neck or chokehold. Perhaps this tragedy will help us finally take action to correct this broken system. Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine says the city and the system failed Neely. We have a shortage of resources at every stage. Governor Hochul also reacting to what happened. That was deeply disturbing and that causes a lot of fear in people. Justice for Jordan Neely! Neely's death prompting homeless advocates to demand someone be held accountable. Dozens chanting on the platform at Broadway and Lafayette Station protesting his death. Police did take the 24-year-old Marine seen in this video into custody, interviewed and released him without charges. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office is now investigating. The critical question here will be what was in the head of the person doing the subduing, right? If that person reasonably believed that there was some imminent harm to himself or others. And finally, we return to 1984 and a crime that serves as a chilling testament to how the problems of the past echo through the decades. He didn't even know the fella that asked this fella for money. The grandmother of one of the four young men shot in the subway Saturday afternoon says her grandson, 19-year-old Daryl Cabey, was not part of an attempt to get $5 from the man who later pulled a gun and started firing. Her grandson is now in critical but stable condition at St. Vincent's Hospital, paralyzed from the waist down. And the grandmother says the gunman should be caught and punished. For a person sitting down in the train, I mean, even if the other fellow did went up and ask him for money, he shouldn't have shoot people down like that. That's not fair. It was a sentiment echoed at a joint city hall news conference at which the mayor, the transit police chief, and the police commissioner agreed this gunman is no hero. What the press has to do in this very critical period is cease trying to panic the public by making up stories about Analogies to this case, to movies and TV stories. This is the real world. It's not Alice in Wonderland. And we don't want to start a panic among our public based on what one person does. The complaint followed news coverage, which in some cases suggested the gunman might have been a vigilante acting against would-be muggers. Vigilantism will not be tolerated in this city. You're not going to have instant justice meted out by anybody because that's not justice. Police today said they'll extend extra patrols of city police officers into subway stations, thus allowing more transit officers to actually ride trains. But that's a plan that's drawn criticism from the Transit Patrolmen's Union. Their president called city police officers unfit to work in the subways. But the transit police chief and the mayor disagree. I doubt that the public is going to feel that they're in any more jeopardy when they see more police officers uh, in the, uh, on his part. In the system. Radio? Takes one to know one, I guess. But the, the fact of the matter is that the, the problem that the mayor has, he's been trying to deal with the perception of crime in the subway as opposed to the actual crime problem. And in dealing with the perception, we haven't cut the number of crimes. We haven't cut uh, heinous acts as uh, occurred the other day. And it's not going to stop until we address the crime problem and not try to deal with perception. Police have distributed hundreds of copies of this sketch. They've questioned and released a number of what were called potential suspects. Three of the four victims are said to be cooperating with the police investigation, and officers say before the shots, at least one of the youths did discuss something with the gunman. Did they ask him for money? Well, there was, uh, there were, they asked him for, uh, first of all, for a match. Uh, they asked him for the time. One of them sat next to him, uh, and then it's not quite clear what transpired after that. The gunman is described as white, 25 to 30 years old, medium height with blonde hair and gold-rimmed glasses. The extra patrols on trains like the number two IRT on which he struck will be the subject of shift-by-shift -shift discussions between city and transit police. The assessment on when to stop, apparently not to be made on law enforcement criterion, but rather on public relations factors. City officials say the problem of crime on the subways is actually less severe than the problem of crime on the streets. But they recognize that people just don't believe that. And they say one way to convince them may be to see more cops on platforms. And that's this week's Crime in the City. Subscribe for more at youtube.com slash fox5ny.